So despite the lack of updates, I've actually been working pretty hard. Over the last uh, month or so, I've shifted from mechanical uh, work to electronics. Um, it's boring for me to do, and it's worse for you to watch, uh, especially because I'm not very good at it. But just to be complete, here's what that kind of thing looks like. So all that hard work brought me to this. And this is LonelyBot's propulsion control tray. Basically, this is the interface between the PC that forms LonelyBot's brain and the motor gearbox unit that uh, is main propulsion. So these units are actually only one part of LonelyBot's architecture. Here's a kind of a block diagram from my CAD model. In purple is the, uh, the CPU, which is basically that laptop or netbook, um, an off-the-shelf computer. And it inter interfaces with the uh, a propulsion control tray in blue. There are a couple other trays which are virtually identical in design but with different functions. For example, in orange is the relay control tray and the purpose of that is to interface with the battery banks and decide which ones are presently charging or discharging. At the rear of the boat there's also a similar um, servo control tray for controlling the rudder position and the heading and then up front there's a sensor control tray uh, which handles compass data and uh, other sensors. All of the trays are connected to each other as well as to the main computer with a simple serial data network. In order to prevent multiple trays trying to talk over each other, none of them are allowed to speak until they're addressed by the central computer. And the way that happens is the computer starts by sending an exclamation point. That's just a character that signifies um, that it's about to start communications. The next thing that follows is the name of the tray it's looking for, and that's actually just a single character. Each one of these are identified by their own letter. And then after that, each tray can respond to a certain number of commands uh, that are specific to each tray. For example, the propulsion tray that we're talking about today can respond to commands to set the throttles for each of the two motors, uh, connect and disconnect each of the motor relays, and then also uh, it accepts a command to report all of the telemetry that is currently monitoring. So I've got the unit hooked up to a scope here to show you why using a model uh, RC model aircraft uh, motor controller made a lot of sense for me. They have this very simple throttle interface whereby you just send them a pulse of voltage and depending on how long the pulse lasts that corresponds to the throttle position. So on the scope this is the throttle um, output line for one of the motors. And you can see that this uh, square voltage pulse here that corresponds to neutral throttle. Now if I send a command in this case I'm going to send an exclamation point uh, that's to signify a command a, because this unit is programmed to recognize the letter A as its address. And then uh, a number one, because I'm addressing motor one with a throttle command. And then a character that corresponds to the throttle position I want, and click send. You'll see that the pulse widens, and now I'm at full throttle. So now I've got everything hooked up just like it would be on, uh, on LonelyBot. I'm using these two extension cords for motor power. Uh, I actually plan to do that on the boat too, just because an extension cord is a cheap way to get a lot of wire that comes with a connector already on it. So each of these cords is wired up um, with all of the wires inside to one terminal on the battery. And then this Ethernet cable handles carrying data and telemetry to the computer here. So to enable the motor, the first thing I'll do is connect the relay that controls the motor system. So that beeping means that the speed control is armed and it's ready to receive throttle commands. Right now it's at low throttle so the motor's not moving. But all I have to do is send it a high throttle command. And the motor start up. So my software here is plotting the voltage and motor current uh, that is currently being pulled. And this purple line at the bottom is the motor current. I want to show you something. I'm putting my hand right now onto the motor to provide some drag. And what happens is you can see that the motors automatically pull more current to counter whatever drag that my hand puts on them. Now, when Lonely Bot's in the water, you know, a wave might come by or he'll start climbing up a, uh, out of a trough or something, and that normally would cause the motor current to spike up like that. However, since we're on a limited power budget, the controller is automatically going to control his throttle based on the current the motors pull, as opposed to the speed of the craft. So instead of saying, we're going to move at 4 knots today, LonelyBot will say, I'm going to move at 15 amps today. And however fast he can get out of that, so be it. So what needs to happen next is this assembly, like all of the other trays, needs to get mounted inside a, uh, a watertight case. 
Um, beyond that, I also have some um, running gear on order, things like the propeller shaft, the uh, shaft log, uh, rudder fittings, that kind of stuff, and then I'm going to slowly transition to working on that. Thank you.